my friends from Zynga and I are kind of obsessed with video games, so we would kind of go home after work and talk about video games, play video games together, do all that fun stuff, and we just kind of got around to realizing that this last December was the 25th anniversary of one of the games that kind of inspired us to do what we do in the first place. So we decided that getting together and doing an art project to reimagine Inafune's original designs was, was an awesome idea. Um, it took a lot of work, it took me about six months of finding people and getting them to kind of sign up for this project, but they kind of came out of the woodworks out of nowhere to, to do pieces for the show. Uh, I wanted to make my Mega Man character kind of sexy. I wanted to do someone almost naked that was like, had some prowess, I don't know. And I felt like my color palette kind of lends more, not maybe to the mechanical, but to just bright and exciting. I used to be a video game artist and funds are our other exploits, but for this show, I feel like, you know, it's just an excuse to do something you love and have fun with it and see it in a new light, you know? I, I'm very happy that they all took very interesting, unique approaches. You know, there's Sparkman over in the front. He is extremely traditional. He looks like an 8-bit painting. Like, it, it is an 8-bit painting, in fact. And, uh, you know, if everyone had done that, I think the show would have been a little bit boring, but everyone took a unique, interesting approach. You know, so I think each person had their own message that they wanted to tell, and uh, they told it in a very interesting, creative way. My piece is a, let's see, a, a holographic art installation. Uh, it was printed on a MakerBot Replicator 2. Uh, it was modeled first in Maya, and then um, I just painted everything. And uh, it's actually using um, a, a technique called the Pepper's Ghost, where you're reflecting on a for, uh, you're reflecting an image, a moving image on a 45 degree angle piece of glass. Uh, so all the colors show through, and all the blacks do not. Uh, I worked behind a computer all day, and I just wanted to actually work on something I could actually touch and paint and just uh, work on it while just kind of chilling out and just kind of having a good time and just listening to music. So I had a, a lot of friends playing Mega Man 2 and we had totally hit, it, hit different bosses at different times and we knew that different powers would work against different enemies in a different way and it was just like it really kind of bonded over that. So it's just really awesome to see di people's different perspectives coming from just like their experiences through it. So that's what I think I love the most about it. I think art critics would still have trouble in this day and age to swallow this as high art, but I'm finding, personally, I find this to be high art. I find some of these to be very traditional pieces, but um, kind of, I, art is a medium that always changes. You know, if you went back 200 years, of course, this would be crap. It would be made in in a digital form, but nowadays people grow up and they appreciate what they appreciate. These nostalgic figures, they're so powerful to, to people of you know, my generation or even around my generation. Uh, my name is Bennett Jobling. I did the Mega Man piece. It's called the Indigo Iconoclast. Uh, I'm inspired by like astronauts and Buddhist artwork. So a lot of the stuff in my piece has got like kind of Buddhist symbols in it uh, and weapons and, and repeating shapes that you would see in Tibetan art. Uh, and then also cool face plates because I like giant robots and astronauts and stuff. Uh, for the piece itself, I actually drew Rush and then Mega Man and then dropped him into the background and drew like the Wily Castle in the style of like a embedded temple in the middle of a mountain. Uh, it's got kind of a storybook feel to it if storybooks were about, you know, hideous cyborg people. I wanted the nostalgia. I wanted people who had played Mega Man previously to come to this show and see these characters reimagined in this day and age, maybe with some kind of uh, yeah, modern day take on things. Like Charge Man actually has Alameda listed as location of the character. So we had a, a, a patron come in and see Alameda written there, and he bought it immediately. He loved it so much, he said it stole the show. So I wanted that feeling. I wanted people to be able to express themselves with the Mega Man themologies and reimagine them in a way that they would appreciate and then have people come through the show and just be inspired and awestruck at all this beautiful art. Uh, video games have like always been a huge part of my life. I've been playing video games since as long as I can remember. So like all my art has always been inspired by it. Like a lot of Final Fantasy growing up as a kid kind of like taught me how to draw. Like I used to just copy characters out of the manuals from like Legend of Zelda and stuff. And like that's really where I learned the fundamentals of art. And everything that I've done since then I think has just been hoping that I could somehow see this in a video game because concept art is like the coolest thing in the world. I feel like it's kind of like a renaissance for digital art right now in the sense that there's so many really talented people doing really amazing things. It's really cool seeing all the innovations being made in, in the digital art spectrum.